Hi, this is Ying Lu at Coilcraft Technical Marketing. Today, I'm going to walk you through Coilcraft's Power Inductor Analysis and Comparison Tool. This tool will help you to get a full picture of each individual inductor's performance and as well as a side-by-side -side comparison of a few different inductors. Here is the interface of this tool. It allows you to directly select up to six specific inductors to be analyzed or compared. The drop-down menu provides access to all Coilcraft standard series and all the selection of off-the-shelf inductance values. You can enter your operating conditions here for your applications, such as switch frequency, peak current or average inductor current, and the ripple currents going through the inductors. Or if you know about your volt time product for your converter design, you can enter your volt time product here, then our tool will then calculate the ripple current for you. So you can compare the losses based on the different ripple current for different inductance values. Once you click the compare button, the tool will then list performance data for the selected inductor and your operating condition. This table contains the spec that can be found on the datasheet, such as nominal inductance value, saturation current, IRMS current rating, and DCR at 25 degrees C ambient temperature. And the part dimension is also listed here. We have length, width, and height. So it's helpful to list these specs here in the tool, but of course, the powerful analysis function of this tool is certainly not limited to just showing the specs that you can see on the datasheet. It allows you to characterize the inductor based on your specific application conditions. For example, if your operating condition requires a DC current at 1.3 amps, which equals the IRMS spec on the datasheet. We can see that part temperature in the tool is showing 65 degrees C, which is 40 C temperance at 25 degrees C ambient temperature. So this matches the temperance spec on the datasheet. When we increase the current to the two amps, the part temp will also be increased. The number turns red when it's getting close to the max temperature rating. So this tool is showing the part temperature based on your actual operating condition. This is one of the analysis that goes beyond our datasheet. Or if the current was kept the same at 1.3 amps, but ambient temperature is now 75 degrees C, so the part temperature will also be increased. The actual IRMS at this particular ambient temperature will no longer be 1.3 amps, it's now 1.19 amps, and the DCR is also updated. As you can see here, both IRMS and DCR are adjusted in the tool based on the ambient temperature that you selected. One of the key functions of this tool is this Analyze and Graph button. It takes you to the next level of analysis which presents pertinent performance curves and data um, for the inductor and operating conditions you selected. Again, you can select one or up to six inductors before clicking the Analyze and Graph button. Here you can see four graphs for this particular uh, inductor. First one, we're showing the saturation curve at the specified ambient temperature, which is 75 degrees C in this case. From the curve, you can see the actual inductance drop at the peak currents of this operating condition. On the datasheet, you will also see um, a saturation curve like this, but that's only for 25 degrees C. This is dynamically changed with the ambient temperature in this tool. Another graph we're showing here is the temp price versus DC current. Our datasheet shows 
on the current rating at only 20 degrees C and 40 degrees C. And this graph in the tool gives a full picture of the temp rise trend over a wide range of DC current. One thing needs to keep in mind though, this graph doesn't take into account the temp rise caused by the ripple current. This is the temp rise purely based on the DC current. So if you have a ripple current dominate operating condition, this graph can't represent the actual temp rise. But the part temperature number in the table, um, that's calculated based on the total losses. So that will still reflect the uh, actual part temperature of your um, operating condition. So we are also showing the current waveform, which the loss calculation is based on. In this tool, we assume the waveform as 50% duty cycle in continuous conduction mode. If you like to analyze the losses in a specific converter um, conditions, we have the DC to DC inductor finder tool for that purpose. So you can click this link below the current waveform. It will direct you to that tool. Now let's take a look at an example of side-by-side -side comparison for a few different inductors you are interested in. Take a TI step-down converter design as an example. So the TPS62136 is designed for a nominal 1.5 microhenry inductor. As you can see, Coilcraft XEL and XFL were recommended for use with this converter. We also have a XAL4020-152 with the same package size. So one question comes up, which one you should pick for this particular operating condition? As we mentioned earlier, you can enter the operating conditions um, for frequency, peak current or average current, and the ripple current going through the inductor. Here we pick XAL4020, XEL4020, and XFL4020 at 1.5 microhenry. We'll let the tool tell us which one to pick. So if we hit the compare button, on this page you can compare the three selected part numbers side by side. For a typical 40% ripple current in this operating condition, XFL4020-152 was grayed out because this part is saturated at this uh, required peak current, which is 4.8 amps. Um, XEL4020 has improved efficiency compared to XAL4020. So you can see XEL4020-152 has uh, much lower total losses compared to XAL4020. When we click the Analyze and Compare button, the analysis graphs show more details of the comparison. Here you can see both XAL and XEL have the softest saturation characteristics to withstand higher peak current. XFL on the other hand has more hard saturation, so this makes it not a recommended part for this converter. Again, um, the I peak requirement for this converter is 4.8 amps. Uh, XFL 4020-152 is already saturated in that region. We also show a loss graph. Um, it breaks down the total losses by AC and DC losses. XAL and XEL, by design, they have the same DC losses. So all the differences between these two parts comes from the AC losses, which is frequency and ripple current dependent. And these AC losses are based, based on our um, real measurements and the Coilcraft's complex models, which is the greatest industrial loss estimation at this time. If we increase the frequency from 1 MHz to 3 MHz, we just mentioned AC losses uh, as frequency dependent. So here, with the frequency increased to 3 MHz, there are more power savings has been achieved by XEL4020. There is 20% more efficient compared to um, our XAL4020. 
To review, the analysis and comparison tool can provide information that is not typically on our data sheet. It allows you to specify your particular operating condition, and our tool will then do the analysis for that condition to help you optimize your circuit design. And this tool is also great for comparing inductor's performance, including the most accurate AC loss um, estimation based on the real measurements. Thank you for listening. Please let us know if you have any questions or feedbacks on this tool. We'd like to work with you to continuously improving our tool and help you make the best choice of inductor for your circuit design. Thank you.